Hey there, everyone. I'd like to talk to you today about something called quantum immortality. Let's just write that out. Quantum immortality. So what is quantum immortality? Quantum immortality is the logical next step of something called the anthropic principle. And what is the anthropic principle? What the anthropic principle is, when you get down to it, is that in order for something to exist, it has to exist somewhere where it can exist. I know that's sort of like a circular logic, but it's an actual principle. So the reason why we live on Earth, it's water and continents and all that stuff, is because Earth supports life. So Earth is able to support life, an asteroid crashes or something, RNA starts going, life evolves, because Earth can't support life. So you will only get life somewhere where life can be supported. So you're not going to have life on, I don't know, Pluto, because Pluto can't support life. Or Pluto. Not even a planet, and you can't even support life. Boo fucking who. X. But that's the anthropic principle, and it doesn't just apply to the Earth itself. It applies to universes. The reason why we have... The laws that we do, like F equals MA, or all that other stuff, E equals MC squared. This is terrible handwriting, but bear with me. The reason why we have these physical laws is because if we didn't, life could not exist. Sentient life could not exist. Humans could not exist if these laws are not in place. And that is the anthropic principle, that the reason we exist in this universe is because this universe can support life. Now, there may be other universes that can support life, but life never happened. But you'll only ever get life in a universe that can support life. So what is quantum immortality? Quantum immortality is the next step of this. So quantum mechanics, unlike classical mechanics, where there are laws for everything, like, again, F equals MA, and etc., Quantum mechanics is all about probabilities, the chance that something will happen. You get a probability distribution, usually on a graph. It's like, it's probably somewhere in here. And that's quantum mechanics. It's more complicated than that. It involves calculus and all that fun stuff. But that's essentially it. It's about probability. It might be here. So there's a chance it could go one way. And there's a chance that it could go another way. Now, if we take that to a person. So at every moment of a person's life, there's a chance that they could go any number of directions. And I'm not just talking like, oh, I'll go to the store today. I'm talking about things happening in the universe that the person is existing in. And depending on which way they go, say this guy goes to the store, this guy goes to the movies, this guy gets shot in the subway, and this guy drowns at the beach. These two get ended. Goodbye. No more Mr. You, whoever you are. But these two, the ones that went to the store and to the movies, they keep going, and they have more splits. But these are just ended. Now, there's actually a movie out there that sort of deals with it. It's called The Prestige. You may have heard of it. It's got Hugh Jackman and David Bowie. And the premise, I'm, I'm going to try to not be too spoilery, because there are other bits that I'm not going to talk about. But the main gist is that Hugh Jackman wants to be the best magician ever, and he has a friend that seems to be able to teleport from one place to the other. And so he gets his friend Tesla, and you should all know who Tesla is. He is awesome. He is the master of lightning and electricity, and he's awesome. He gets Tesla, played by David Bowie, to, well, actually, Tesla had already invented this duplicating machine, so he just borrows it from Tesla. And to make it look like he's teleporting from one place to another, he duplicates himself, because the duplicator um, makes the duplicate somewhere else. So what he does is he sets up a trap for the duplicate, and this is sort of revealed in the first few moments of the film, and the duplicate will die. But Hugh Jackman is concerned that every night when he does this trick, and it looks like he's teleporting somewhere else, one of him will become 
the guy who teleports and is safe and fine and lives on, but someone else dies and goes and drowns in the vat of water. And he doesn't know each night which one he's going to be. He doesn't know which end his consciousness will propagate into. But quantum immortality solves the problem for him. Every night he has to go into this one. His consciousness has to go into the one that survives. Because the one that doesn't survive, well, there's nothing left happening there. There will be consciousness in both of them, but he'll keep going on in this one. And no matter how many times he does it, he will always be the one that survives. And I can hear you skeptically looking at all this, especially since this is all being done in paint. And I'm going to clear this all out again. And I can, I can hear your skepticism through the computer monitor. Why does he have to be that one? Why won't he be the one that dies? Well, because think about it in terms of evolution. Uh, I know some of you are skeptical of evolution, but I'm just going to pretend people don't exist. So you've got DNA, which is a double helix, yay, and your DNA carries genes. Uh, it's a terrible double helix, but there are genes on your DNA. And these genes get passed on to your descendants. If it's a good gene, it'll get passed on and get more passed on, more and more and more. So it wants to be the one that's passed on. If it's a bad gene, it doesn't get passed on. And this is probably a false analogy, but it sort of gets you in that idea that a gene <clears throat> will go, will try to propagate itself. So, now from your view, to change the subject, other people will die. Goodbye, other people, you die. Goodbye, R.I.P. Other people die. Yes, they do. But from your perspective, you haven't died yet. And there's probably a lot of events in your life where you could have died. Where your car maybe swerved away from a cat or something. I don't know. Kitty catty. And you just barely survived. But you didn't die. Now, there is a universe out there where you do die. You run into the cat and you die. Goodbye, you. No more you. I'll change colors. No more you. Die. But you're in the universe where you didn't die. And you're going to keep noticing that you don't die. Because while your consciousness propagates in each and every one of those, only the one that doesn't die survives. And that's really interesting because the so let's say you start as a baby, little baby here. I know I'm making this unnecessarily complicated, but let's say a little baby who looks like a sheep on its side. He has pathways he can go. Little parallel universes with slightly different differences where different outcomes will happen. And in one of those, the baby has SIDS. Goodbye, baby. Charla. And we have more decisions. More things happen. Not even decisions of the individual, but just things that happen around the individual. Like, say, this individual happens to be a Jew born in Germany in the 1940s. Well... That individual is not going to go anywhere. But we have more and more places that can go. And then let's say Japanese in Hiroshima in the 1950s. Goodbye, you. But eventually we get to one that survives as long as it can before there's just nothing else that it can get around not dying and it dies. You will be that one. That is you. Your consciousness will propagate down the line that is most, that has the longest survival. Now we see other ways of this happening. Let's take a look at photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a quantum operation. So a leaf, uh, where's the paintbrush? Here's the paintbrush. Has the chlorophyll, and the chlorophyll is a bunch of atoms. Yeah, and there's one way for the atom for, yeah, well, I am totally being silly here. So light propagates onto the chlorophyll, and it energizes one of the atoms, 
and that energy will go from atom to atom, but it doesn't go in a straight line. It goes to a bunch of different atoms all at the same time, and it's trying to find the shortest way to get off the chlorophyll. As soon as it gets off the chlorophyll, all those other paths never happened. And I know that's weird, but this is quantum mechanics we're talking about. This is science. There's evidence behind this. Photosynthesis works this way. It goes off in a number of different directions all at the same time before finally collapsing like this. I probably should have started with this and not the prestige, but oh well, I'm not going to go back. So that's how photosynthesis works. It tests doing a bunch of different things at the same time, and then once it finds the quote-unquote right way to do it, it does it. And that's the way it goes. It collapses the waveform, because these are all probabilities of happening, but it does them all at the same time before doing one of them. And it gets even weirder when you have the double slit experiment. Oh boy. So if so if you've got a bunch of light all going in at the same time, light acts like a wave and a particle, but it does act like a wave. And when waves propagate through a double slit, they'll interfere with one another, like this. So you get spots here where they cancel out, and spots here where it's really bright, and spots here where it cancels out, and spots here where it's really bright. And you get an interference pattern of dark, light, dark, light, dark. But you still get that interference pattern even if you send those photons or electrons, electrons also behave the same way in this instance, if you send them in one at a time. Because it'll interfere with itself, because it's one photon will go through both slits at the same time. Because it is doing every single path at the same time. As long as it's not being observed, it does both paths at the same time, because it's trying to find the path of least resistance or whatever. So it goes through, and it will interfere with itself. This is not a mathematical construct. This is physical. It will interfere with itself. And so you still get a dark spot here, even though you're sending through those photons one at a time. If this were marbles, and you were throwing marbles through one at a time, they would go through one or the other. One marble goes through here, one marble goes through here, and you would have a uniform distribution of marbles. But light doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Light is quantum mechanically propagating both ways, and it interferes with itself. And if you remember going back to the photosynthesis, the light on the chlorophyll is doing the same thing. It's trying a bunch of different patterns, and then it collapses into one wavelength when it observes, that is, when it gets off of the chlorophyll. So that's what's happening during your life. So let, let's get a people color. Here we go. So there's a person. And this person has a number of different ways it can exist. So it could exist here and die drowning on a beach, or it could exist here and get killed in the Holocaust, or it could live a long and happy life and discover the cure of cancer. And it's doing this all at the same time in a number of different universes. Because a person can't be superimposed in the same universe. A person is not an electron or a photon. It's not a single particle. You can't be in two places at once because there's too many things observing all of your molecules. But you can be in multiple universes at once. You're in all these little parallel universes that are all doing different things. But your consciousness is going to propagate all the way through to this last one. It's It seems like, and it, it will seem like, as if your quantum body thing is trying to find, actively, sentiently seeking the path of least resistance. But it's not. It's taking every single possible path and then collapsing that path onto one. That's your longest life. So you will live as long as it is physically possible for you to live. So if it's physically possible for things to line up that you live to be 125 years old, 
you will live to be 125 years old. Now, other people may see you die at 25 or 50 or 75, but you will experience yourself living to 125 because of quantum immortality. That's how that works. Okay? I hope that made sense.